Hello chaps, here we are in London on a fairly grey bank holiday Sunday afternoon, May Day today, happy May Day. And what I wanted to do today was talk a bit about the issue of whether or not it is time to settle down. And I don't just mean for me, although I know you're all champing at the bit to know what I intend to do about that, but I just mean in terms for, of for you and for anybody really, how do you know if now is the right time to settle down? And indeed, what does it really mean to settle down anyway? What does that term actually mean? Now, the reason that I'm talking about this is because over the course of the last few videos that I've put up, which have all been fairly reflective, and I've been talking about, I guess, some of the negative sides, some of the downsides of living a, let's say, itinerant, bachelor type lifestyle where you you know you're not you're not married you don't have a family necessarily or you don't live with them anyway you're not in a domestic situation maybe you're traveling maybe you're meeting different people and i've been talking quite a lot about some of the drawbacks of that some of the emotional difficulties that, that comes along with that that lifestyle and it seems like people have responded well which is which is really good <clears throat> and i'm glad about that because i'm glad that there's this area of knowledge that probably isn't getting talked about enough and perhaps needs to be talked about more, especially for guys who are a little bit older, maybe in their 40s and so on. But what's also happened is that you get a lot of kind of well-wishers who come along and they will leave comments or they might even send a message to me, you know, like a DM or something and they want to offer advice you know they want to say well you should you know you shouldn't concentrate on your ex-girlfriend you shouldn't concentrate on this life's too short move on do this do that x y and z and one of the messages that i've had a couple of times is people basically saying, well look troy i've watched your last few videos and it seems to me the overriding theme of this is it's time for you to settle down because you know you're saying life as a single adventuring itinerant bachelor is not all it's cracked up to be so therefore maybe it's time to hang up your boots and settle down and smoke a pipe by the fireside and all of that good stuff i imagine is, is what they mean and when they say settle down of course <clears throat> i think what they're really talking about is is getting into a relationship getting into a monogamous relationship meeting a woman having that one-on-one -on -one relationship, maybe that leading to engagement, or certainly living together and then engagement and marriage, and maybe kids, family, etc. And as I say, quite a few people have messaged me along those lines over the last few days and weeks. So I wanted to address it because um, for a start, I just feel like and I have expressed this before, but it, it bears repeating because the message never goes through for, for most people. It, it, it just seems to me to be a, a misconception and quite a, a dangerous misconception actually to put out into the public consciousness that there is ever such a thing as settling down, as if you ever reach that static plateau where you just stop and everything's solved. You know, when I read these comments, what the people seem to be saying is, well, Troy, why don't you just settle down? Why don't you just find a good woman? Why don't you just find a wife? And I guess what the person thinks is, all right, so if Troy stop making these stupid videos, which probably a lot of you wish I would do, Troy just stop making these stupid videos and settle down, you know, got together with this woman, he would be happy, he wouldn't need to make these videos anymore, everything would be sorted, end of problem. And that just seems crazy to me. It seems absolutely crazy to me. And you kind of wonder, have these people even been in a relationship before? Do they know really what it, what it means to be in a relationship? Do they not understand the very simple fact that, you know, unfortunately, in this day and age, relationships aren't necessarily built to last. And it's not because I'm a terrible person. It's not because any of the women that I've ever come into contact with have been terrible people or anything like that. It's just, you know, we've got a divorce rate of around 50%. Now, people will quibble that statistic. So when I mentioned that last time, somebody said, oh, well, it's not 50% everywhere. And no, of course, I mean, there are regional differences. Um, I think in the UK, currently, it's slightly lower than 50%. Um, 
We're walking down German Street, by the way, which is famous street for tailoring in London. I like to buy clothes down here myself. Uh, it's a nice little street with some old world type, uh, type tailors and businesses down here. Um, yeah, so sure. I mean, the, the rate may be less than 50% in some territories. I know in some other territories, it's actually higher than 50%. The divorce rate is higher than 50%. And surprisingly, I was very surprised. Um, even in some Eastern European territories, I think Hungary was one of them where you would expect, because it's a more traditional, patriarchal sort of society, you might expect the divorce rate to be lower. Actually, the divorce rate was, was higher, so like up to 60% and so on. So let's not quibble about the figures. The, the fact of the matter is that divorce is, is pretty high. It's pretty commonplace, it's pretty high. Um, of course, that's not to say that you can't enter into a relationship, into a marriage and have a successful marriage, right? I mean, obviously people do that all the time. I have friends who've done that. I have family members who've done that. Of course it is possible. But the point that I'm making is this, this notion of well, just settle down, just as if, as if it's a simple, quick thing that you do, and that solves your relational issues for the rest of your life, is, is just a fallacy. When you get into a relationship, and when you move forward with that relationship towards settling down, which, let's face it, probably means living together, really, your problems are only just, just starting, in a, in a way. I mean, living with people is, is not easy, there's compromise involved, all right? Um, and as we saw from the pandemic, oh, voice, voice went a bit there. As we saw from the pandemic, cohabitation is, is difficult, and, and particularly intense cohabitation over longish periods of time causes actual strain in relationships and can lead to the dissolution of relationships rather than their strengthening, right? Because Crudely speaking, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder and uh, familiarity breeds contempt. So if you do meet that special person and you guys end up living together, then, you know, not to say it's not gonna work, obviously it does work for many, many people and that's fine, that's great for them. But what I'm saying is you can't, you can't guarantee that it's gonna work. And, uh, and also you've got to factor in the issue of time here as well. I think it was the blogger uh, Black Dragon, Caleb Jones, who wrote quite extensively about monogamous relationships and particularly long-term monogamous relationships and, and how complex and challenging they can be. And one of the points that he always made, and I think it's a very good point, is that yes, I mean, monogamy is great for the first two years, three years, five years. You know, monogamy, fine, it's great. We can all get behind it. Who doesn't want the dream? Who doesn't want to meet that special someone and snuggle up by the fire and have great sex and watch Netflix together and go to country cottages with log fires and all that kind of stuff? Obviously, we all want that stuff, right? I mean, um, it's very, very nice. It's, uh, it satisfies you know, our sensual side, but it also satisfies our desire to, to pair bond, right? Um, of course, we all, we all want that, or most of us, most people want that, right? It's, natural to want that sort of a setup. We're going past a really nice, we're going past a really nice shop here called New and Lingwood. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of it behind me on the camera. Yeah, so, you know, of course, it's, it's natural to want that. And for the first few years, certainly the first few months and then going to the first few years, look at this shop behind me, fantastic great stuff in there, great dressing gowns and things. Very, very nice. Very expensive, of course. Um, yeah, so for the first few months, for the first few years, it can be incredibly pleasurable and incredibly enjoyable to be in a one-on-one a -on -one committed monogamous relationship with somebody. But, and this is the point that, that Black Dragon makes, Caleb Jones, after that period, things start to get tricky. And you're not really, you're not really in the trenches with this stuff until you're after about the five year mark. And then when you get to the five year mark, things start to get very difficult, or they can 
I stress, again, there are no absolutes here. I'm not writing every single relationship off, but they can get difficult because the, the familiarity has set in. The, the sexual allure that was hopefully there in the beginning has, has cooled. And what are you left with? You're left with the practicalities. You're left with real life. The mystery has gone both for you, but also for her, okay? And that's the important thing. And guys actually, I think, can often be more forgiving of familiarity even than women can. Because guys, I think, for the most part, kind of want to have a quiet life. You know, you're with your, your girlfriend, your wife. Um, okay, the sexual spark might not be quite as intense as it was on, on day one when you guys first met in Oceana, in Richmond, or whatever it was, Twickenham. But, you know, you snuggle up on the sofa, you watch TV, you watch Selling Sunset together, and it's good enough. And guys can be quite relaxed about that. You know, I don't want to rock the boats, and also I love her and, and everything else. It can sometimes, frequently in fact, be women who get the itch, women who aren't feeling the butterflies anymore. That's a phrase that gets used a lot in Britain. You know, am I feeling butterflies for this person? The butterflies have gone, okay? And then what happens? The woman starts to think, well, I'm not being fulfilled as a woman. I deserve to meet a guy who's gonna give me butterflies. I deserve to meet that guy that I'm passionate with, that I feel that extreme sensual desire for, that extreme sensual pleasure when I'm with that guy. And um, the current guy that I'm with now, he's not doing it for me, and so maybe I need to think about dumping him and moving on. And we do hear this statistic a lot, don't we, that 70% of divorces, try and cross the road now, 70% of divorces are initiated by women not by men which does suggest that women you know as much as they initially may want or think that they want monogamy seem to get bored with it pretty quickly and the, the problem that you have as a guy is that you could only maintain the mystery for so long and i do think at the beginning of a relationship even if it's a, a well especially if it's a casual sort of friends with benefits type relationship you want to maintain that sense of of mystery for the most part because you, you need the excitement there you know you need the intrigue you need the drama but really for for any guy i'm probably trying to cross the road again here really for any guy it's impossible to maintain that um indefinitely you can only keep that going for so long and then inevitably it's going to fade because she's going to find out everything about you she knows what time you wake up she knows you know the fact that you snore when you're going to sleep uh, she knows what you do on a sunday morning she knows the state that you leave the bathroom cabinet in you leave the toilet seat up you know whatever it is she knows all of that stuff the uh famously remarked upon um underwear on the bedroom floor all of that good stuff you know she's seen it all and she has become disillusioned i mean not necessarily that she doesn't like you anymore or she thinks you're a bad person but she that initial mystery is gone that that allure that first drew her to you has been eroded naturally by the course of time and by the course of human events and normal human life and i don't think really any guy can avoid that i think you you know imagine prince harry now very hard for prince harry prince harry in no way can have for Meghan markle the same allure that he had when he was the fairy tale prince and she was hoping to become that beautiful glorious princess okay now they're shacked up together in los angeles in their no doubt very large and very beautiful home but nevertheless they're in this domestic situation does she still feel that sense of allure and mystery towards him probably not okay so for any guy it's going to be difficult to maintain and especially if you're watching this and you're a, a regular guy like me it's going to be even more difficult to maintain so there is you know a reasonable chance that at some point if not immediately but at some point down the line then the woman that you are with is going to find that she's, you know, not as attracted to you as she was. Maybe she's a little bit bored. And, you know, then things get tricky, right? Things get tricky. Is the relationship going to continue? Is she going to leave you? Is she going to decide she might be better off looking elsewhere? Is she going to fear 
that perhaps you aren't the best that she can do in the dating marketplace? What if somebody else starts to pay her attention? Okay, what if that guy at work who's just started in the accounts department, who's good looking and does snowboarding and likes to do CrossFit at weekends, what if he starts paying her attention, slipping into the company emails? Well then, is she gonna have the strength, the fortitude to hold out against the advances of chat is she, in accounts? Is she gonna have the inclination to hold out against the advances proffered to her by chat? Well, you know, we live in a society where the constraints, the societal constraints on not even cheating, really. I mean, cheating is not really condoned in the way, uh, sorry, isn't, isn't um, prescribed in the way that it, it once was. But I mean, certainly moving on from a partner that you are no longer fulfilled by um, is, is absolutely de rigueur. And it is even encouraged, really. Um, so you've got to consider, right? Is she going to hold out or not? Maybe not. So the reason I'm talking about all of this, just to let those people go past, the reason I'm talking about all of this is because <clears throat> the notion of settling down, as if it's this uncomplicated, easy solution to all the stuff that I talk about in these videos, is just logically flawed. It just, it, 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 it just isn't the answer. It's not to say that it's not something that you can do if you want to do it. I mean, yeah, for sure, right? I mean, you meet that person that you are, you know, you're attracted to, you're compatible with her, you guys have a great time together, you can see a future in it, um, you want the same things, and that's, of course, the important thing. You know, does she want kids? Do you want kids? Are you in a financial and, you know, otherwise stable enough position in order to be able to provide for those kids okay if all of those things are in place if there's a sort of a plan whereby you guys can move forward then sure if you want to do it then do it but the idea that you know the former enfant terrible the uh degenerate dating coach who's been running around europe and south america for years dating lots of different women she'd be like oh well mate you know you know mate you know what you need to do just settle down like, you know, it's not as if I hadn't thought of that. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a complete buffoon who's entirely shut off from the rest of society. I do understand what the options are available to me, you know, and I was in a, a long-term relationship with somebody that I love very much um, for a number of years. And I've said on video before, if I was gonna settle, settle down, really it would have been with her. Um, and that didn't happen for a variety of reasons. Um, and so am I now keen to find, just find somebody else to fill in that void? Well, not, not really, no. For the reasons, again, that I've, I've talked about in the videos. Because settling down itself is, is complicated, it's challenging, it doesn't, it's not necessarily gonna work. Work, in inverted commas. Um, walking through Mayfair now, very fancy area. Not necessarily gonna work, you might find yourself back on the dating market, you know, pretty soon afterwards anyway. And there are also advantages to being that guy who is um, autonomous, self-actualized, whose time is his own, who's able to go and do his own thing. There are a huge amount of benefits to this as well. Now, yes, I spend most of my time on these videos whinging about it. And maybe I shouldn't, maybe I need to talk more about the positives again, because there are many, many positives. Okay. Um, I've observed before that many people who were, you know, taught dating, were prolific daters and things like that, there seems to be, well, there's a few options, isn't there? You either turn to God and you grow a big beard and you become religious, you get married, or you basically go, go nuts in some form or another. Okay, those seem to be the three options. I don't believe those should be the only three options. I think that there is, um, I don't think that you need to find religion. I also don't necessarily think you need to, to get married just because you've run out of ideas. I think that that's a slightly intellectually um, unadventurous thing to do. It's always seemed to me that, you know, all these blokes who are banging on about getting married and settling down, it kind of seems like 
they're saying that just because that's just what they've heard you're meant to do. That's what everyone does. So why don't you do that? I think there's a, I think there's another way. Um, I think it's related to living life on your own terms. I think it's related to travel. I think it's related to, 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 to having as good a time as you can possibly have um, as an adult in the brief period that you have on, on, this, on this planet. And you know, it doesn't, you, hopefully you're not gonna go nuts. You don't have to get married. You also don't have to become a religious maniac either. There's, a, there's another saner path here, guys, um, which you know, I'm, I guess I'm exploring for the time being. Um, but at the same time, it would also be disingenuous for me to make videos where I'm just claiming that everything's great the whole time because, because it isn't great the whole time. You know, if you're somebody who travels and you date around and you do all this stuff, there's also going to be downsides to that. Okay. But in the end, we all choose our own poison, don't we? You know, it's like, I mean, Tom Torero used to talk about this. It's, it's sort of like, if you want freedom, then you're probably going to have to put up with a bit of loneliness. Okay, well, loneliness isn't very nice, but then neither is being forced to go to Ikea in Norwich by your nagging wife. So which, which one are you going to go for? Okay, now I know two ends of the extreme, exaggerating somewhat, hyperbole, whatever, but um, in the end, you have, to, you have to make your own choices and no choice is going to be completely free of no, uh, you know, unwanted consequences, let's say. It's just, it's just how it is. That's just how life is. I don't think it can be different for, for anybody. So anyway, look, I've been rambling on for ages. That, those are my, are my thoughts on this, um, on this issue of you know, so-called settling down. I just don't think it's a sort of a, I don't think you reach this plateau where it's like, oh, I have settled down. I have transcended my internet dating coach buffoonery. Now I am a settled down man and I don't have to worry about anything again. I mean, it's just nonsense. It doesn't work. Life doesn't work like that. Okay. So stop putting those comments. Think about it a bit more. Understand that whatever choices you make, whether you do choose to settle down or you choose to remain single and you go traveling around Colombia or whatever, there are going to be downsides to that as well as positive sides to that. And, you know, decide what you want to do. And ultimately, it's not for me to say, it's got to be for you to decide what you want to do. Anyway, with all of that being said, I'm going to leave it there for now. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give me a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Get onto my free email newsletter. The link is below. Grab my collection of 11 books about dating, the dating marketplace, and all of that stuff. And I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.